First of all, we are citizens with God's people. Now, I know a lot of us are proud Americans, but we are much greater. We are a citizen of God's church. great struggle of our times, the struggle between freedom and tyranny, between democracy and communism, is a serious, deadly struggle. Swartz and Truber attended Rosedale Bible Institute in 1990 in Irwin, Ohio. It was originally called Conservative Amish Mennonite Bible School. Most of the students were from churches that were even more old order. RBI was nearly monastic in its rituals, daily chapel and tight reins on dating, movies, music, and even bedtime. Some of my best moments at Rosedale Bible College was in Professor Elmer Jancy's class. He taught there from 1957 to 1996. He was winsome and provocative. The class was ethics. There are some things in my life that I regret. There are some things in my life I wish I could do over and live over again. How about you? But I am so grateful that it's early in my life that I found God and he became the focus of my attention. It was not as intense as it should have been and could have been at times, but it was always there. And I am so grateful tonight that I can look back over my past life with a very minimum of regret. First, to be true to Mennonite customs, I must point out that Elmer was from the Michigan Chances. His wife was a vendor. She was my father's first cousin. Her father and my grandmother were siblings, and she grew up as a Mennonite in Greenwood. People like Elmer Jancy, who's married to Miriam Bender, Nevin's daughter, who showed me by their lives that one can learn without being engaged in some formal study of instruction very Socratic in his methodology, and so he, it wasn't uncommon for him to pose a question and ask us to chew on it and solve it. And typically there wasn't an easy answer. It'd usually be um, two bad options, and you'd have to figure out which one is the better of the two. <laughs> he was an ultra-conservative pastor pushing Bible students towards critical thinking and exploring situational ethics. I remember one time he looked at the class and said, you guys call yourself pro-life, but you're okay with the death penalty, or you're okay with going to war. And he would push back on, is a fetus's life more precious than a 17-year-old soldier? These are all very interesting ideas. And within a class of even Mennonites, there were people that had friends that were in the service or family members. I even remember one time he said, can you be a Christian and commit suicide? And as we jumped into the conversation, started throwing out ideas, uh, one girl kind of stopped the conversation and said that her mother had committed suicide. And once she said that, it changed the tone and the dynamic of the dialogue. My very black and white world that I came into the college with and realized that life's messy and complicated. Swartz and Truber took Jancy's class during the Reagan presidency. Pro-life was locking in as the single issue vote for the conservative right. Ronald Reagan, as did Donald Trump, followed the pulse of the Republican Party in regards to the legal rights of pregnant women. Mennonites believe God made life sacred. Over the years Swartz and Truber found that statement mystifying. The New Testament builds a case for the soul being eternal and sacred but the Bible suggested that people take life. Kill the Moabites, take up the cross, stone the homosexual. Clearly God himself is not a strong pro-lifer. Nor are his mandates for his followers always pro-life. Sometime during the Reformation the Anabaptists broke free from Christendom in their rejection of all violence. In Swartz and Truber's painting the man is torn between his protective instincts and pacifistic ideals. 
he resorts to a pitchfork since Mennonites are against bearing arms against their enemies. Ethics becomes less philosophical and sometimes unsustainable when loved ones are involved. <laughs> the Defense Department knew that nothing angers an honorable man like a woman being molested. Thus propaganda posters would show the enemy carrying a frantic female figure. In Schwarzentruber's painting, the pervert clasps a piece of her dress and his phallic club. He doesn't even have enough shame to buckle up and run. Instead, he waits to attack again. Few would argue that there is anything sacred about this villain's life. Now the first thing you must do is to strike the correct fighting pose. Head back and chest out. I said chest out! On the horizon is a mushroom cloud. The violence the molester did is insignificant in comparison to an atomic bomb. The artist's uncle, Robert Hostetter, gave talks at colleges about America's development and use of nuclear weaponry. The World War II attack on Hiroshima and Nagasaki may have killed as many as 226,000 people. Most of these were civilians. Many survivors had birth defects, chronic illness and cancers that affect successive generations. The United States only lost around 2,000 civilians. One might ask, if God sides with the American military, why would the U.S. need to kill so many civilians with an atomic bomb? So something to chew on is St. Teresa said that Christians are the hands of God. And when America goes to war, such as World War II, and we drop a bomb that destroys so many civilians, are we the hand of God? Is that what God would do? Is that what God wants from us? Rather than just simply fighting other soldiers to actually kill children and for there to be generational uh, turmoil and, and pain from that bomb. But now we're moving into the second century of our existence as a congregation. What's the Lord calling Greenwood to for the future. I don't even have to always be completely 100% sure for myself where I stand on every issue. And if I am going to give ethical advice for someone else, I need to do it with great humility and should really be nervous about the idea of voting and legislating laws to govern other people's morality and ethics when it's not super clear what the right thing is for a diverse culture with lots of different worldviews and beliefs. We should be pitiful, the King James Version says. Most of the other translations will uh, use a different word, and I think it's probably maybe just a better translation of the Greek word, and that simply means humble. <laughs> 